Hey everybody, it's Joe here from Style You by Joe. I'm in the kitchen. It's fall. Everybody who has watched me before knows I love my crock pot. Um, it's the Hamilton Beach slow cooker searing crock pot. What I really love about this is it has a cast iron insert that I can take out of the crock pot and cook, put it on the stove and cook like that. And that's exactly what we're doing today. Um, this recipe is out of the Giant Savory Magazine. It is a slow cooker spaghetti squash bolognese. I'm gonna let you know how they did it. And then if you've watched me before, you know that I change it when I do it. So what it calls for is one small, one small spaghetti squash. It calls for a teaspoon of olive oil. It calls for a pound of, let's see, they're calling for 85% lean ground beef. It calls for a quarter or three quarters of a cup chopped onion. It calls for a can of 28 ounce diced tomatoes, a crushed clove of garlic, um, a, uh, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a cup of low fat milk, and then Parmesan over the top. So, like I said, if, if you've watched me before, you know that I tend to change things up a little bit. Now, turkey breast. Turkey breast is very lean. It's very, um, there's not a lot of fat to it. So that's why they're going to add the milk to that to give it some of that fat. That's also why they're going to cook at first with um, the olive oil. I have changed that to a um, Haddonfield... Um, sweet sausage out of the casing. So I'm just going to drop that into my preheated cast iron cooker. Um, again, it is raw meat, so if you touch it, you should wash your hands immediately. I'm trying to stay really clear of that. Drop that in there. My hands up. All right, I'm not sure if you're picking up on it, but it started to sizzle immediately. Um, the best way to break up meat is an old fashioned uh, potato masher. This one belonged to at least my grandmother, if not my great grandmother. And you just wanna get in and break it up. Now, those of you who cook know that you want this to get brown. Brown, can equals flavor in cooking. It's when the sugars from the meat, from the vegetable, or whatever you're cooking, caramelize, and that equals flavor. So you wanna let this cook for about seven minutes, um, getting nice and brown, getting nice and broken up. I'll be right back with you. All right, everybody, so it's been seven minutes. My uh, pork sausage has heated up. So, they called for three quarters of a cup of onion. I don't know if that's three quarters of a cup, but it's a small onion. So, I'm going to get that in there. It called for a, like, tablespoon, a teaspoon of garlic. I don't know. One crushed garlic clove. Yep, that'll work. Give that a stir. Now, it called for a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, which I'm going to do, but I got the firm and crushed tomatoes with the basil, garlic, and oregano in there because more flavor is, well, more flavor. So, dump that right in there. It called for a cup of low fat milk. Again, I think that low fat milk was to add some fat to the turkey, so I don't necessarily need to do that. But, hmm, what would I do to give it flavor? Here is a cup of the beef bone, uh, the bone beef broth that I made a while ago. The video I know is on there. So what I am going to do is dump that into the tomato can and just swirl it around a little bit to get all of the tomato that didn't come out because why on earth would you waste that? Dump that in there. Give it a stir. Incorporate as we go. 
a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper or a lot of it some of my Himalayan pink sea salt now here's kind of where again you can take that turn it called for a teaspoon of dried oregano which I'm absolutely going to do. So a palm full of that. If you don't like oregano, don't use a lot of it. It can be very overpowering. But now I added sweet sausage. So I'm going to also add a generous heaping of parsley flake. I'm going to add some basil. And when you work with fresh herbs, you want to crush them. That's what brings the oils back. That's what brings the flavor back. So if, if you're in questioning why I do that, that's exactly why I do that. A little bit of uh, fresh thyme. And for years, mentally, even though I knew it was right, I said, thyme like it's written but it is thyme um say it however you want because i'm not going to fault you now i'm going to add just a little bit of fennel seed to it but again that's going to bring that sausage flavor to it and they can be very overpowering so just add a little bit to it but i like it um and, and that you really want to get between your fingers and crush because it, it is a seed um but i love that Give that a good stir. Now here comes the killer part of this dish. I have an acorn squash, which I've halved. I've cleaned out. Or spaghetti squash, not acorn squash. Sorry about that, folks. And you're just going to stick that in there. Turn this bad baby on high. Put the lid on there and you're done. You can now go about your day doing whatever it is that you need to do because the steam that's going to generate in this dish is going to loosen that spaghetti squash. In eight hours when you're done, you're going to take a fork to the spaghetti squash. You're going to pull it through there. It's going to loosen all of the squash fibers, which literally look like spaghetti. Put it back in there, give it a stir, maybe let it go for five or ten more minutes so it gets really incorporated. Spoon that out, top that with some uh, shredded Parmesan, and you're good to go. Again, this is a healthy um, dinner. I'm going to have leftovers. It's going to be great. Folks, if this is your first time watching me, where the heck have you been? Please go to my YouTube channel, Style You by Joe. Give me a thumbs up. Please, if you really like this video, share it with your friends because they deserve to be just as stylish as you are. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.